Hi everyone, this is extra footage about the massive number tree three. If you haven't watched the original video on the number file channel, it might be worth watching that first. What is it good for? What, 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 what is it useful for? What has is, what is this, any of this got to do with anything that's important? This is really important in proof theory. Okay, so there's something called Kruskal's tree theorem. It's quite a long story short, let, let me sort of very loosely paraphrase what, what Kruskal's tree theorem is. Well, this was something that comes from a guy called Joseph Kruskal. He was a very influential mathematician, did stuff in computer science, did stuff in combinatorics, and he proved this, this particular tree theorem, which involves these, something to do with all these trees. Okay, but basically he says, imagine the set of all the different combinations of seeds that you use, okay, and imagine there's some sort of ordering, some sort of, like, it's called well quasi-ordering, okay, so some sort of notion of ordering in that set. Then he said, the corresponding trees that you build out of those, the set of all n, is also has some sort of notion of ordering, and for us, the, the notion of ordering is this idea that eventually you'll find one tree that contains a previous tree, right? What's, what's this, any of this got to do with proof theory? You can't prove Kruskal's theorem using finite arithmetic. So if you just play with finite arithmetic, finite numbers, you cannot prove Kruskal's theorem. Another way of saying that is, if you try to prove that tree of n was finite for all n, you can't do that using finite arithmetic. It's just not possible. You can, however, given any value of n, you can prove that tree n is finite. So if you say, can I prove is tree three finite or tree four finite, you can. And so, you, you can so you can't generalize, but you can do specifics. Yeah, so you can take any particular choice of n, tree three, tree four, tree five, and you can use finite arithmetic to prove it's finite. It just takes a very long time. Okay, so how long does it take to prove it for tree three? So if I'm gonna use finite arithmetic, that's all I'm going to use, and I want to prove that tree 3 is finite. Well, a guy called Harvey Friedman worked this out, and he said to prove that tree 3 is finite, using finite arithmetic, you would need this many symbols. Okay, and this is ridiculous, right? Two, arrow, arrow, a thousand. Now, you may remember what this north arrow notation means. It, basically, it's kind of the, it's like exponenti exponentiation on, on steroids, right? So this really means two to the two to the two to the two da, 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 a thousand times. So this tower contains a thousand twos. Okay, so this is how many symbols you would need to prove that tree three is finite using only finite arithmetic. What do you mean by symbols? You mean like plus sign? Yeah, just yeah, essentially, yeah. Any kind of operation, yeah, those sorts of things. Okay, now you could use trans finite arithmetic, this whole game of ordinals and all that, and do things much quicker. Right? And that's how you can prove it's true for all n, actually. But if you just want to use finite arithmetic, you need this many symbols. So presumably that hasn't been done. Well, let me see if it, let's ask, can it be done? Okay. So how fast could you do it? What's the fastest you could write down any one symbol? Okay. That's a Planck time. You definitely can't write a symbol down faster than one Planck time, which is about 10 to the minus 43 seconds. It's a tiny length of time. So let's assume you can write down one symbol every Planck time. Which is which, pretty fast. Which is pretty fast, it is, and you definitely aren't going to do it any faster without things collapsing into black holes, okay? So, so that's the fastest you can go. Right. Could you have got anywhere, if, even, if, even if you'd started at the Big Bang? So you start at the Big Bang, do a symbol every Planck time, would you have got anywhere? Nowhere. You'd have got nowhere in this proof, okay? Could you ever finish? That's another thing you could ask. Could you, you know, carry on arbitrarily far in the future? Could I ever finish? And even the answer to that is no. And the reason the answer to that is no is because, well, we, we look outside, we, we do cosmological observations, and there's a strong evidence to suggest that there's a, a finite entropy in our universe. And what that means is there's a finite number of states. What that means is, is that eventually you'll get what's called a Poincaré recurrence, which we've talked about before, and the universe will eventually reset itself the universe will eventually reset itself. And that will happen after this Poincaré recurrence time. So, which happens first? Do you finish the proof or does the universe reset itself? Easy, the universe resets itself way before. So before, you're doing this proof and then, oh, the universe resets itself. This is a disaster, <laughs> so you can never finish this proof in practice. It's just, it's just crazy. So then you might ask, okay, right, so I can't actually write down this proof. This is gonna just, the universe is gonna reset itself before I get a chance to finish it off. Okay, could the proof just materialize? Well, let's just imagine it did, 
okay? Well, then you have a problem because you can't fit the proof in our universe. So this is no good anyway. So it's just, it, it, it's just, it might, the proof might exist in principle, but no mathematician is going to write it down at any point. But yeah, so the, the, the transfinite proofs, you know, in particular, you can prove Kruskal's tree theorem. So you can prove that these trees are finite for any n, you know, all this sort of ordinal arithmetic, all this sort of stuff to, um, to prove that. Uh, but yeah, if you just want to use finite arithmetic, well, you can't prove Kruskal's tree theorem using finite arithmetic, but you can prove any individual tree uh, number using, using the finite arithmetic. It just takes a really, 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 really long time. If I said to you, okay, start working your way towards tree three and start drawing all the trees, and it would take, obviously, a long time until you ran out. Well, we, we could kill the forest straight away if we wanted to, but yeah. what's the longest we could do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Does it excite you to think there is a number? Like, does it excite you to think there is this finite number just lurking out I think out so. There? I think that's what's so cool about it. It's not that, that it's, it, I mean, it's, well, there's two things that I think are particularly cool about it. It's one, that it is finite, that this game, whatever happens, is going to end. Now, the universe might reset itself before it ends, but we, we won't go into that, into that detail. But this game is going to end, right? The other thing that's mad about this, is absolutely crazy about it, is that you go from one to three to just something that's just unbelievably gargantuan. It's just, that's, what kind of sequence does that? That's just mad, right? But the, you get these sorts of things in mathematics, and, and it's only in mathematics that I think these things really happen. I it's want good. to know what it is. It's just lurking out there. Like It's too big to, for any kind of physical, anything in physics, just, you know, it, it, you can't relate it to this, to this, uh, to this process, to this, to this number. It, it's just too big. Is it one of those cases where we know the last digit is a four? No. Nothing. Only thing we know. So it's the only thing is that it'll take this long to prove how, how big it is. That's, that's the closest we can get to, to, to touching it. And even that is just ridiculous. Often when we do these videos, there's there's uh, on big numbers. There's some clever person will put on the uh, on the comments. Oh, I know a bigger one, and they'll put on this one tree three plus one. Okay, you've seen them, right? Okay. To preempt that, I want to do something a bit better. Okay, so. Three, three, plus two? No, well, three, three, plus three? Yeah, okay, very good. <laughs> well, you, there's certain things that you could start writing down. One of them would be, of course, very simply, tree four. All right, that's not so amazing. That's way bigger than tree three. Okay, but so what, right? How about this one? Tree three, but not three, tree three. Let's put tree of tree three. Okay, so now what we're saying is we've got tree three number of possible, like, seeds. Uh, seeds. And we're going to ask, how many trees can we build out of there? That's off the scale. That, that, I mean, that is what God knows what that. And then we could do that again. Look, what could we do? We could do tree of tree. Of, it's getting bigger and bigger, right? What we're doing is we're iterating. This is what we're doing. We're iterating. So in a way, we could define the following. Right? We could take any tree of n. OK. And I'm going to put a little uh, subscript on it. OK. So we take tree of n. I'm going to call tree of zero of n tree of n. And I'm going to call tree of m plus one of n is tree of tree of m of n. So what it's saying is, is that I keep doing this kind of thing. I keep adding another tree. To, to increase this number by one, I just apply tree again, right? So I could keep doing that. And I could just do it. And I can define this new quantity, which is tree of m of n, right? You might think, okay, I can get really big stuff with these things, right? Well, but now I need two numbers to describe it. No, I don't. I can diagonalize. And I can introduce a new thing, which is tree n of n. So it's n applications of tree to the number n, right? And I'm going to call that tree bar. Okay. And now what I've done is I've, whole, I've, I've, I've suddenly opened the whole thing up again. I've kind of almost gone back to the start, but gone back to the start somewhere that's way bigger. Right? So this, what, I've, what we're doing here is we've got the idea of recursion and diagonalization. And this is how, in maths, you build really, 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 really big things. These fast-growing hierarchies. Um, but that's definitely another video. <laughs> Do you know what the thing I like there is compared to like the infinite number of numbers, we're still just a drop in the ocean. It is. It's not. It's not. Yeah, that's true. It's true. It is. It's, it's nothing.
compared to those guys. This is just way bigger than anything that you could even begin to imagine in physics. Does this make you happy? It, it sort of, it makes me sort of, it makes me kind of feel kind of powerful <laughs> in a weird way. It's like knowing that there's this, that there's this m crazy number that, you know, someone would say, oh, say a big number. Oh, yeah, whatever. Tree three is bigger than that. You know, this, this is thing. It's like there's this thing out there that you've got all these physical processes going on in the universe all around you. None of them are anything compared to tree three. Tree three could batter them. And then even if you came up with something that tree three could batter, I just do tree of tree three and I can batter it again. And it just goes on and on and on. It's like it, it suddenly you wield this incredible power uh, that only maths can give you, I think. Well, if you're still watching now, you obviously like this extra material. Have you subscribed to Number File 2, the channel you're on now? If you haven't, press the subscribe button and maybe press the little bell to get notifications as well. Thanks for watching. We'll be back again soon.